Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Hoagland, lead designer at Silver Gaming Company. And I'm Travis Hoagland, I am lead game developer at Silver Gaming Company. Today we are going to be giving you a brief overview on how to play Goblin Grapple, a 2-4 to four player strategy card game. This game was inspired by elements of both Stratego and Classic Roller. But it also features bluffing and trick-taking mechanics to make the game really suspenseful. Our Kickstarter will be launching on May 6th of this year and will feature as an add-on a premium wooden box that is uh, laser etched with our logo with a foam insert. This example in particular is just a review copy of the game. This is what we've been sending out to reviewers to review the game. The final box art is still being made, but obviously we'll have it ready for the Kickstarter. In the game, there's a total of seven different types of goblins. Each one of these goblins features a number in the top left-hand corner. This is their attack power. Typically, the higher the number means that you're going to win against a lower number in a battle. However, there's certain cards that have special abilities. So the 0, 1, and 2 all have unique um, abilities associated with them. So the 0, the goblin spy, allows you to discard it and actually look at another player's hand and swap out a card of your choosing. The Goblin Defender replaces an existing card that's in battle, so it allows you to protect another card that you'd like and bring that card back into your hand. Now as he mentioned, typically the higher numbers beat the lower numbers. However, the Goblin Assassin will always kill a king. To start a game of Goblin Grapple, you take all cards included in the game and you shuffle them and you deal five cards to each player. And you shuffle the cards and collect them every single round, so all the cards are getting reshuffled per round. The game is played over multiple rounds, and you win the game by being the first person to reach 100 points. Each round is completed when somebody reaches 21 points or more. Right, and in this case, because I was the dealer, if this was the start of the game, Brittany would get to draw a card first, and then on my turn, I get to draw a card, so every time it's a player's turn, they draw one card from Okay, so at the beginning of your turn, you get to draw a card. Then you have as many actions as you want. The three different actions that there are is to place a goblin spy, place goblins into your own army, and attack another player. And you can do as many of the, each of those actions as you choose. So in this case, I'm going to play a goblin spy, which allows me to look at his hand. And when I show her my hand, I make sure that other players don't also see my hand. So, in that, I got to look at his hand, take a card of my choosing, and replace it with a card of my choosing. So another option is to place goblins into your army. And those are played stacking on top of each other, and your outermost goblin is always attacked first. Another option that you can do is to engage another player. Okay, so here's how a battle would play out. I'm going to engage him with a three. Which then I have to flip my outermost goblin card. And it's two. So a three beats a two. So I'm going to take that and secure that in my garrison. Those are locked in points for me now. Now I'm going to battle him again with a five. And he has an eight. So he would win. However, I'm going to play this goblin defender and take back my five so I don't lose that card. Then I would take these and put those into my garrison, and I have a locked in nine points now. So now we're going to cover how to resolve ties in uh, Goblin Grapple. So if I were my turn and I were to attack... I'll flip over my outermost card, which is also a three. Now in this case, because I'm the attacker, I automatically have an advantage, meaning I'm going to automatically take both of these unless she decides to respond with her card face down. Yep, so it's my choice whether or not I'd like to re-engage, but if I don't, he'll get to take those cards, so in this case, I'm going to choose to re-engage. And now, it, it would be her advantage now. She's going to take both of these by risking that card face down. I don't know what it is still. If I choose not to re-engage, she's going to take both of those and this will go back to her hand. In this case, I'm also going to re-engage. So I flip over mine, which is a five, so I get to beat his three, and so I get to take all these cards and lock them in as points into my garrison. 
Now what that did though is she's completely out of cards. I still have cards. Knowing that, I will attack again her remaining goblin in her army. Which is a three again. And because I have a card and she does not, I'm going to automatically get these goblins. Right, because I don't have a card in my hand to choose to re-engage, so I don't have that option, so the cards go to him. Right. In the event that I did not have this card and I would have attacked, then it would be a split pot and she would get a three and I would get a three. And that's how the battling works in Goblin Grapple. So in Goblin Grapple, you get points for what's in your garrison as well as what's down in your army. However, the cards in your hand do not count for points. Right. So if this was, for example, this was my turn, and um, in my hand, I have three threes and a zero. Uh, my best play here is knowing that Brittany's garrison is at 19 points right now. 19. I am going to put these three goblins down into my army, and I'm going to attack with my goblin spy, which is... So it gives me 22 points, which effectively ends the round. I get th those points are locked in. However, the cards in my hand get discarded. I do not get points for them. I don't have a hand because I put it all face down first, which means I get credit for those nine points, which brings me up to a total of 23 points for the round. So I technically won the round because I reached 22 first. However, he gets 23 points, so he beat me in points for that round. We're really excited about our upcoming Kickstarter on May 6th, and if you're local to the Minneapolis, Minnesota area, we'd love for you to join us. 14 local game stores have agreed to host an event for Goblin Grapple, and if you could show up and show your support, that'd be amazing. And if you're not local to the Minneapolis area, we'd love for you to check out our Board Game Geek page, where you can find a free print-and-play version of Goblin Grapple, so you can try it out for yourself. Otherwise, if you are local, we'd love to see your support, and you can um, go to our goblingrapple.com website for a full list of our tour dates in March.